magic of change. Magic means change. You change one thing into another. The great psychologist turned water into wine, and that was magic. Change is what you want. You want prosperity instead of the endless struggle for money. You want to be somebody and do something great. Everybody wants to be important. You want beauty instead of ugliness. Champagne instead of beer. A rolls instead of a bicycle. A mansion instead of a flat. You would like a palace if you could get it. Yes, you want to work magic. Magic is what changes the drab into the lovely, the ordinary into the extraordinary. How do you set about it? You change yourself first. Change your way of thinking. Change your attitude to life altogether. It is a thing you can only do for yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. I can show you the way, but it's you who have to work the magic. Perhaps there are not too many books that might change your life. But this one will, if you take it as gospel. Don Quixote wrote romantic tales of valour, tales about a knight and he became a knight himself. Reading books sent Don Quixote on his travels, and this book may send you on the most exciting journey of your life. John Bunyan read the Bible and became one of our greatest English authors. Who knows, your turning point in life might be brought about by reading all this. I hope so. Take heed, then, the whole idea of magic is change. It pays to change. Make no mistake about it. You have been content to jog along, accepting a minimum existence. You must be different. All great men and women are different. Different to the masses. And that is what brings them magic. You must have enough guts to rebel against having a dull life. There is an art in being different, in changing. It does not mean that you have to irritate your family, your wife, your husband as the case may be, only that you claim the right to speak and act as you feel. And from now on you are going to think, speak and act in a positive way. Are you fed up at the end of the day, worn out and bad-tempered? If you are and you don't change, you've had it. You must change and change quickly, or this worn-out feeling will increase. The truth is, you are fed up with doing the same things day after day, though you may not realize it. Nothing can be more tiring than seeing the same faces every day, hearing the same bits of advice like cheer up old man from the hearties. You are fed up with catching the same bus or train day in and day out, fed up with putting the cats out or the dogs in and trying to get the cats out, fed up with shopping and waiting in queues. What you need is change and freedom to do as you please. You must get it. You want something to happen, something nice, to work, to sleep, to eat, to work and to sleep again. That way madness lies. Quote, they must often change who would be constant in happiness, unquote, wrote Confucius. And Bacon backed up this statement with the words, nothing is pleasant that is not spiced with variety. Start with little changes, go shopping, or to work by a different route. This means that you will see a fresh pair of faces, different buildings, even the ticket which has been buff may be suddenly transformed to green or blue. Eat out if you usually eat in, eat in if you usually eat out, read your paper from back to front, use your left hand instead of your right. Determined to smash routine.
There was a person once who said to President Roosevelt, Something interesting is going to happen to you. He answered, I take good care that it does. To most people, life is a drab, a drab affair. They are bored. They will tell you everything is the same. But everything need not be the same. To sleep in the same bed every night, eat from the same table, favour the same pastimes without care or thought for the jostling crowd, that is complete madness. Couldn't you sleep in a different bed, in another room, for a change? Couldn't you eat from another table once in a while? If you play golf or tennis regularly, couldn't you go boating or fly a kite now and again? You will always find that the people who live in a vicious circle, i.e. doing the same thing in the same way week after week and year after year, are the people who are always next door to nervous exhaustion, today, tomorrow and every day, constantly living in stressed out lives. Don't be a slave to sameness. Pull yourself together, people say. How you wish you could. Get yourself a diary and each day write in it something new and different which you have not which you have done on that day. Like this you have a constant reminder and can get yourself out of the rut. If you had to get up at five o'clock this morning and walk a mile and a half to the bank to cash a cheque for a hundred thousand pounds, you would do it like a shot. Tiredness would not enter into it. You would be up with the lark and off like a streak of forced lightning. You were tired and exhausted simply because you were absolutely fed up with things. There is no spirit of adventure in what you are doing. You are lukewarm. Cold at the switch. It is all the same. The man who goes away to the seaside and paddles with the kiddies for a fortnight feels fine and says the sea has done him good. It has to a certain extent, but it is the change from the eternal sameness of every day which has worked magic. You must change your pattern of life, but make the right patterns. Once you become satisfied with things as they are, you have ceased to thrill at the chance of a new adventure. The best of life is over. Try something new every now and again, every day if you can. You have been used to seeing a musical show. Buy a ticket for a new play instead. Or go to a first night if you have never been used to doing this. Go and see all the magicians you can. I've seen him before, you might say. But go again. Magicians change their programs. Take the magical Claudine. This dark-haired lovely lady appeared in satin tails and included a beautiful dog in her act of magic. Now she appears with blonde hair and a glamorous white dress and quite a different set of magical equipment. Magicians know the value of change. You must know it too. Determined to get more out of life. Make every day exciting. Brackets. What can I make happen now? Brackets. Do something to make life fuller, richer, deeper, broader, different so that it can never become dull. Turn places upside down. Do not cling to the one style all the time. A husband told me the other day that his wife was always changing around the furniture. He would come home and everything would be in a different place. Well, that wife at least has the know-how of magic. She will never get in a rut. Neither will she let her husband get bored with sameness. Alter everything. Do opposite of what you did before. Things will have stood in certain places for years can be found another place. Leave not one thing as it used to be. Then set about yourself. Get a new frock in a new style or order a different kind of suit. Alter the dressing of your hair, even if the colour if you want to. Try out new foods. Cook in a new way. Change. You will become a new personality. You will feel and look ten years younger. Do not get into the rut that is too deep to climb out of, too deep to be able to see over the top. The famous actress Jackie Collins says, Oh, 
for sure I changed all of me. She realised she was in a rut and did something about it. Jackie Collins, she said, scowling at herself in the mirror. You look horrible. What did she do? She decided to change everything about her. You've got to change your face, your figure, your life, the lot, she said. She had her nose changed by plastic surgery. She was plump and she slimmed her figure. She had her hair tinted red and turned it up instead of wearing it long. She changed her agent and changed her food. She even changed her name. Now she was Lynn Curtis. She had gone from one success to another and life is exciting. Take Douglas Fairbanks Jr., who has always looked a very British gentleman. He hired a New York public relations firm to make him look more American. He is American by birth. Douglas wanted to project himself as an all-American corporation executive, as he thinks it is a disadvantage that so many Americans think of him as British. Anthony Glynn, author of the famous novel I Can Take It All, decided one day to change, and his wife decided that she was happy to go along with him over this. First I changed my appearance completely, she said. I sold all my clothes, those faultless little brown, grey or navy dresses, and I got myself some scarlet jeans. I do my hair Spanish style now, and I wear shorts in summer. I'd never worn shorts in my life before. When I was first married, we went off to Paris for a honeymoon, and I fussed terribly over my clothes, little black hats and dresses, very much me lady abroad. But we went back in our new personalities. I went in jeans and a football jersey and carried a string bag of lemons because I liked the colour and we went to little cafes and nightclubs. It was much more fun. Our great idea, you see, was to give up things that bore us. Sir Anthony and Lady Glynn have new personalities and declare that they are enjoying life more since they changed. Are you always tired? Could you drop off anywhere? You need a change. This thought has breathtaking responsibilities and possibilities. Try it. I was looking at a magazine the other day and read, Every night for four years my wife has eaten two rounds of bread and black currant jam washed down by half a pint of cocoa. Four years, see what I mean? Thumbing through another magazine, Perplexed wife at dinner table to angry husband. Monday you liked beans, Tuesday you liked beans, Wednesday you liked beans, now all of a sudden, on Thursday you don't like beans. Meant to be funny, but there is a lot of truth in it. There are people who each day breakfast in the same way, the same spoon, the same plate, the same kind of marmalade from year to year. Magic never comes to them. They haven't a clue. Do you eat outside in the summer? There's no doubt about it, eating on the terrace gives you a more exotic, sun-drenched Mediterranean feeling if you do it in style. Different china, different linen, different food from the year in, year out familiar friends. We all know people in a vicious circle, though they may not realise themselves that they are in it. The neighbour whose garden gate clicks at the same moment every morning, you could set your watch by it, so exact is he doing the same thing at precisely the same time every day. You know the night he takes his wife to the cinema and the night they stay at home for television. You know the exact moment old Brown across the way takes Rusty the Airedale for a run. The exact time the Smiths turn out the lights and go to bed. And there is the spinster you know who goes to the same cottage every year and sends the same picture postcards to the same set of friends year in year out and so on for the rest of life such a fate is dreadful anything any change rather than one long eternal sameness whatever you do do not get into a rut vary the formula of your work in life strike out along new paths once in a while sameness mere routine is the long run spells decay I knew a woman who always wore heavy tweeds and thick brogues. Someone gave her a lace handkerchief for Christmas and she changed. She became more feminine, wore high heel shoes, velvets, satins and gossamer undies. Her whole personality became vibrant, gay and exciting. Get out of the rut. Change. Get 
out. All ruts are bed, even those that are lined with rose leaves. Put on your hat and go. Go anywhere. See anything. Look for the unexpected. There are men and women I knew years ago who are still just as charming, just as pretty. But the fire has gone out. The sparkle in their eyes, gone forever. They want that one... They wanted at one time to throw their arms around everybody. They felt so happy, so alive. Their eyes shone and glistened and sparkled with the excitement of joy of living. They wanted to shout for joy till the stars came tumbling down through the roof. But now they will say, I have longed again and again for that moment. I do not know what it was, but to me it never comes again. It is such a pity. Most everyone has such an experience in a lifetime. To perpetrate this state, you must try something new. You must make a change, and so stir that within you, which readily responds with pep to the thrill of a joyful surprise. The one vital factor in all things that gets on our nerves is repetition. It is the constant repetition of something we dislike to hear or see or do which kills, kills the gay, ever young spirit within us. I change my performances quite often. I change the clothes I wear on the stage. Sometimes a velvet jacket, sometimes just an ordinary suit. And I've changed my name from Al-Koran to Koran. Change brings magic. <laughs>